For the last few years, Citroen has been on a grand comfort crusade. And now they've got another model that joins in on that fight against sportiness. It's this, the Citroen C5 Aircross. Now, of course, before I do anything else, I must ask you to like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe. That's very important. And also click the little bell icon so you get notifications when we upload a new video. That's also very important. Citroen, as a brand, has done some very interesting things in its time. Two perfect examples, the original Citroen DS and of course the Citroen Mahari. Two more dissimilar cars you couldn't hope to find from a single manufacturer. On the one hand, you've got a grand aerodynamic barge with hydro-pneumatic suspension. In 1955, at a time when many cars, let's be honest, still look like they should have a horse at the front. On the other hand, you've got a doorless 500 kilo recreational vehicle that was designed by an ex-World War II fighter race and was named after a type of camel. Over the last few years though, Citroen has narrowed its focus onto something that, in truth, it has always found to be quite important, and that's comfort. It all started with the C3 back in 2017, and not long after that, Citroen introduced the C3 Aircross SUV. And then after that, Citroen brought along the second generation C4 Cactus. That was the comfort jewel in the Citroen range with its schnazzy seats and clever suspension. It was the new comfort benchmark for Citroen. And if you haven't already seen that review, might I recommend that you click up here and, and give it a good watch. And now there is this, the Citroen C5 Aircross. Now the C5 Aircross is built on the same platform as the Peugeot 3008, but of course the key difference is that this is geared towards comfort. Firstly though, I'll start with the looks. And you know what? I actually quite like this car. I like how the front grille extends out to include the front lights. I like as well how the front lights are below the LED daytime running lights, not the other way around. Usually it is the other way around. And as well, how the central Citroen badge extends out to the corners. I like the roof rails too. I like the rear lights. I just think it's a very quirky, cool little design. Inside, there are a few familiar features from the Peugeot 3008, like the buttons on the steering wheel, the cruise control, the gear selector, the start-stop button, the handbrake, but for the most part, it feels, feels very Citroen in here. And like the C4 Cactus, it has these advanced comfort seats. They've basically got several layers of different types of foam that are just going to insulate you slightly better from the lumps and bumps of the road. And they're also quite a bit wider maybe than most normal seats. As I said in the C4 Cactus review, they're a bit like armchairs. And again in here, they're a bit like armchairs. What don't I like? Well, the paddles behind the steering wheel. I like the fact they're attached to the column. I don't like the fact that they are made out of a really, really cheap and nasty plastic. Also, the infotainment system. Most of it works quite well, but you can't do some simple things without taking your eyes off the road and really having to look at what you're doing on the screen. Anyway, what's it like to drive? Well, with comfort in mind, I'll start with the suspension. And like the C4 Cactus, it has the same suspension system, which means progressive hydraulic cushions. You've essentially got a secondary damper, one that converts more kinetic energy into heat energy and progressively gets more resistant with more suspension travel. It's a very clever way of bringing a new element of comfort to a very ordinary, very affordable, normal car. And it's without doing something complicated like the hydro-pneumatic suspension you used to get on the original DS. That had a habit of leaking. Does it work? Well, yes, I think it does. It does feel different to the C4 Cactus. I don't think it's quite as competent on some broken road surfaces. There are times when it, yeah, it just doesn't feel quite like it's doing the same job. And I think part of that is probably to do with the fact that this car is heavier than the C4 Cactus. But it does add that new element of comfort that you just couldn't really get with traditional suspension. As an aside, if you're wondering why Citroen has a World Rally team, the suspension on this car and also the C4 Cactus drew lessons learned from the C3 WRC. Without that car, this technology probably wouldn't exist. 
So if anyone ever tells you that motorsport is irrelevant and pointless, point them towards this car and tell them that they are wrong. Engines, well you can have a 1.2 litre turbocharged petrol with 130 brake horsepower, you can have a 1.6 litre turbocharged petrol with 180 brake horsepower, you'd have a 1.6 litre turbocharged diesel with 130 brake horsepower or a 2 litre turbocharged diesel with 180 brake horsepower. Essentially petrol or diesel is either 130 or 180 brake horsepower. This car has the 180 brake horsepower turbocharged petrol engine, the PureTech 180. So it's 180 brake horsepower, 180 pounds feet of torque, 0 to 62 miles an hour in 8.2 seconds and a top speed of 134 miles an hour. It's a good little engine actually, it feels like enough power for this size of car. I think the 1.2 litre would probably just feel a little bit underpowered for something like this. A C3 fine, but perhaps not a C5 Aircross. And it's quiet and smooth too, which is probably what you want in a car that's orientated towards comfort. All that being said, I haven't filled this car with five people and loads of stuff, so perhaps if you were going to do that, or you were going to travel long distances regularly, then maybe one of the more torquey diesels would suit you slightly better because it would just have a lot more low down punch. Gearboxes, well you can have a six speed manual, but only in the lowest powered petrol or diesel. If you get one of the more powerful cars, then you have to have an eight speed automatic, the EAT8. It is the same gearbox that you'll find in every other Peugeot, Citroen or DS. It's a bit slow to respond sometimes. It takes a while for it to kick down and the throttle sometimes feels a bit slow, but left to its own devices, it's smooth. And again, you know, when you're building a car that you want to be comfortable, a smooth, steady gearbox that you don't really notice is what you want. If you want to use the paddles, however, I mean, just don't bother. It, then it is actually quite slow and quite frustrating. It doesn't give you the gear when you want it to. Just leave the paddles alone. As for the steering, it is light and uncommunicative. The lightness, I don't really mind. Again, it all comes down to comfort. You don't really want heavy steering, but the lack of communication, that's a bit more irritating. It doesn't really inspire confidence. The car's got okay grip. You just don't really know when it's gonna run out. Prices start at £25,485 for the feel, the entry level car. They rise to 29470 for the Flare Plus, and this, the Flare, is £27,295. All in all, as the next chapter in Citroen's comfort journey, it really works. It's comfortable, it looks and feels unique, and it feels quite different to its sister Peugeot 3008. Fun? Maybe not, but have Citroen achieved what they wanted to? I think so. That being said, however, I would like to draw your attention, dear viewer, and anyone watching this who is from Citroen, to a little button down here on the centre console that is labelled Sport. In every aspect of life, a clear direction, a sense of clarity, an end goal, brings focus. That button shows a lack of clarity. It's like someone came along and thought, oh, people love sport buttons, we must remember to put one in the car. Citroen, don't lose your focus. 